everybody, and welcome to another installment of Believe It or Not, Vintage Mego. If that clever segue didn't tip you off already, we're going to be talking about the Mego Greatest American Hero toy line. It's the one that got away, sadly. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory. Greatest American Hero was a mid-season replacement show that premiered in March of 1981. Its combination of superhero, sci-fi, and comedy made it an instant hit, especially with kids. I was probably 10 years old when it premiered, and I can tell you, it's all I thought about that year. I remember running out and buying the uh, Joey Scarberry 45, and I was desperate for merchandise from this show. It was my favorite show on TV. The show was renewed for a full season in 1981, and that did not escape the gaze of Mego Corporation. Mego still had two successful television licenses at the time in the form of Dukes of Hazard, one of the hottest shows on television, and Chips. Plus, the main character of Greatest American Hero is a superhero, and well, Mego did kind of okay with those. So this was meant to be. There was no toy company better suited to do Greatest American Hero than Mego. The initial plan would follow the same pattern they've done with Dukes of Hazard and Chips. That is, three and three-quarter inch figures vehicles, possible play sets in the future, and an 8-inch line. Mego had briefly abandoned the 8-inch format in lieu of producing a 12-inch deluxe higher price point figure. I'm not sure what changed, but around 1981, the Dukes and Chips saw the return of 8-inch figures, and they really stopped making 12-inch boys lines altogether. The initial offering was to be three 8-inch characters of Pam, Ralph, and Bill, and a box set of Pam's car, the Volkswagen Bug, and two figures of Ralph and Bill. I guess you don't get a three and three quarter inch Pam, sorry. All the packaging art for Greatest American Hero was by comic book legend Jack Davis. The rumor I've heard is that Marty Abrams saw an illustration of Greatest American Hero by Davis and hired him to do the packaging. I can't verify that, but that sounds right for Mego. The 8-inch figures were sculpted by an artist by the name of Dana Green. I know this because Green actually ended up selling her prototypes some time ago to a Long Island comic book store. Unfortunately, the only thing in the line that made it to the market was the bug with the two figures. The 8-inch line did not see full production. There's a number of reasons for that. None of them have anything to do with the Greatest American Heroes popularity, but more Migos status at the time there was a swirl of bad news circling the company and i'll get into that into a later video but when i asked a vp of r d at the time bill Barron, why they didn't get the eight inch greatest american heroes out his response was something to the point of nobody was buying from us anymore nobody was listening so i, I think there was an impression in the marketplace that if they ordered from Mego, they probably wouldn't get the product because they wouldn't be around. And that's self-fulfilling if you don't buy anything from a company that's in trouble. Now, of course, the 8-inch samples did get around. There were quite a few produced, and there seems to be different production runs of the Ralph Frinkley figure. Uh, my friend can tell you the differences between them. They started to surface in the 1980s. Most famously, the first story I heard was from a collector on Long Island who had one named John McGonigal. His friend had found them at a flea market where a former Mego employee was just selling their inventory, and the box was actually on the bottom, and there was a Ralph, two Ralphs and a Bill, and he bought them and gave a Ralph to my friend John, and I think that Ralph has gone around to several collections. I personally did own a carded Ralph Hinckley for a while. It was lovely, but I traded it for something, and... While it still gives me pangs of doubt, I did get something pretty cool for it. So, you know, it all evened out. However, the prototypes are pretty pricey. Some of them are going past $10,000 now, and that doesn't help the average Mego collector who doesn't want to spend that. In the mid-2000s, a one-day license was granted to the FX Toy Show, and Dr. Mego, in conjunction with the FX Toy Show, produced a limited run of Ralph Hinckley figures. Now, this was not a reproduction of the actual 8-inch prototype. It was a new sculpt by Scott Fensterer that actually really did resemble William Cat. The figure sold out in a day. I, I know that for fact because I was supposed to get paid with a figure for helping out with the project, and unfortunately, they ran out, so I never got paid. 
The box set with the car on the secondary market is a very expensive piece these days. There are a lot of them about, but the problem is there's more people looking for them. You've got Mego collectors. You've got what I call 80s kids who love this sort of television program, even though they may not specifically be Mego collectors. And then you have the dreaded Volkswagen Beetle collectors. So you've got a whole bunch of different people looking for the same set. That drives the price right up. I picked mine up at San Diego Comic Con about 14 years ago, and it seemed like a premium price at the time, and I'm sure I didn't get what I would consider a deal. However, in retrospect, it's like a bargain. I'd buy that on eBay any time. So I'm happy I bit the bullet when I did because I don't think I could afford it right now. To this day, people still say to Mego that they should get the Greatest American Hero license. And I don't know the ins and outs of it, but hopefully someday we see an 8-inch Ralph Hinckley on the store shelves. It's like a wrong that needs to be righted. Are you a big fan of the Greatest American Hero? Would you go after an 8-inch line? Let me know in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Twitter, at Mego Museum. We have a wonderful forum at MegoMuseum.com and even a Facebook group called Migomania. Hope to see you in one of those things. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope you'll hit like and subscribe if you're new to this. And I'll be back in the new year with more Vintage Migo. I'm going to take a slight break over the Christmas holidays. I wish all of you well, and I hope there's some Vintage Migo in your future. Take care. Have fun.